Hi there, today I'm going to be showing you how to take a map that you've built inside the UDK and make sure that it shows up smoothly for other people who view it regardless of what their anti-aliasing settings are on their video card. To achieve this we're going to be creating a new post-process chain and we'll be applying the new anti-alias post-process. And you can see that if we zoom in on this cart over here that it has some pretty ugly jaggy lines. So we're going to be getting rid of those and making it look uber smooth. To achieve this we're going to start by going to the content browser and select new and for package I'll keep PP anti alias which is my map name. This post process is going to go directly into my map but you can also create a new package and I'll name this anti-alias post process. Whoops, I slightly misspelled it. And then we'll select post process chain. And there's our new post process chain, but it doesn't do anything yet, of course, because first we need to play around with the settings and then we need to also attach it to our level. So let me just get the content browser out of the way here so that you can see what's going on in the map while I'm working on the post-process chain. Actually, let me bring that back for a second. Before we do anything with the post-processing settings, we're going to want to attach the post-process to our level so that we can see what's happening in real time. So let's make sure that the post-process is uh, selected in the content browser. Go to World Properties and we'll scroll down to uh, world post process chain and use selected item in content browser. So now that's set up and we'll move that back out of the way. And don't mind me, I just habitually save packages. Uh, but I keep forgetting that I can't do it from there. I have to go to the map and save current level. Then we'll go back to our post process chain settings because now we're all set up in real time to see what we're doing. So I'll maximize this a little bit, right click and add Uber post process effect. And we'll be connecting this to our scene render target, which is necessary before anything is actually going to show up on our screen. And you'll see that as soon as we connect it, there's a very visible difference, but it's not exactly what we're looking for. To address this with our Uber post process effect selected, we're going to go down to the depth of field settings and the two main properties that we're going to focus on are the focus inner radius and the focus distance. You could also change some other settings like the fall off exponent, but the main one that I'm concerned with is the focus inner radius, which is currently too low. We're going to want to increase this to something like 2000. And this is all to some degree kind of arbitrary and you can experiment with what works best for your map. And the focus distance I'll increase to eh, 1000. Now we already have a much clearer idea of what's happening in our scene which allows us to focus on where the magic happens with anti-aliasing. So what I'm going to do next is go up to post process anti-aliasing. And there we are, and currently that's set to off. And what we have here are two settings. We have the post process AA type and the edge detection threshold, which I don't think does very much visibly. So we're going to leave that alone for now, but the post process AA type has two different types of settings and that's FXAA and MLAA, which are different implementations from NVIDIA and AMD respectively. In my case, my NVIDIA card does not seem to support MLAA whatsoever, but apparently some do, and I guess that would make sense because you can only choose one type at a time, and otherwise one brand of video card would always be missing out. I would suggest going with the FXAA because I believe it's supported on both brands of cards, and even my lower end NVIDIA card, it's a 9600 GT, supports it just fine. So I've cycled up from off to FXAA5 and you can see what a difference that makes. Now I'll just go and turn it off again so you can see a direct comparison. Back and forth. 
So you can see that's quite the impressive difference. I mean, look at these jaggies as I move around while it's turned off. And now with the back on. It's very cinematic looking, very smooth. And something strange that I noticed is that the, when I turn it on, my frame rates actually seem to increase, and I'm not really sure why that is, but I'm sure Epic Games probably has some kind of explanation there. So again, the obvious great benefit of this is that it works totally independently of whatever settings a person has on their video card, which allows level creators to have a high degree of control over the way that their level is presented to the public, which is absolutely amazing in my opinion. And now, I mean, we're pretty much done. The absolute last thing that we need to do is go save our packages one more time, make sure that all our changes to the post process have taken. One more time, you would normally do it from the content browser if you're saving an external package, but I'm not. I saved the post process as part of my level, so I'm going to have to go to File, Save Current Level. And the reason I did it that way was because then if you want to send the map to somebody else, they're guaranteed to get the effect included. So that's pretty much it. I hope that you found this useful. Please stay tuned for more Unreal Development Kit tutorials from VoxHouse.net. Please go to our website for a full list. The VoxHouse TV player at the top of the page has a channel dedicated to our learning videos. And uh, you can click that and browse through that or you can check the blog posts under the UDK category.